Hey, it's Nicole and welcome to my janky Boston vlog because I am lazy and not as talented at editing as Cass is. So last month I flew out to Boston for a few days with my family for my brother's college graduation. So uh, here's some of that. So day one was a traveling day. Um, we were flying out of Long Beach Airport uh, before we jetted off. I stopped and got some caffeine. I wanted a chai latte but they had run out of chai so I was sadly left for just a basic iced tea, but either way, caffeine was inside of me. Uh, that sounds weird, but that's what it is. Um, anyway, this is my first time flying out of Long Beach Airport, at least that I can recall. Um, it's a smaller airport, so we got to walk on out to our plane and climb stairs like they did back in the old days. Um, so we had a brief layover in Denver, um, which was our time to eat lunch. My dad had packed some bon me from back home, so that's that. Fun times. And then we finally flew into Boston in later that night at like 9 10 p.m and finally arrived at our verbo and that was pretty much the end of day one Day two, while my mom and aunts went off to the JFK library, my dad and I decided to walk around the Freedom Trail. If you don't know, the Freedom Trail is pretty much a collection of different historical sites in Boston that you're able to kind of just walk around the city and see. And um, there's a handy red line on the ground for you to actually follow, so that's nice. Uh, but before we started to do that, I did make a stop for caffeine. Um, so I stopped off at Tate Bakery in Cafe. A. I don't know if I said that right, but that's where I stopped. And I finally got my chai latte that I was hoping for the day before, along with a pistachio croissant because I had never heard of that before and it was good. So we walked around the commons for a bit and then we started off on the trail seeing a few different sites, including the Granary Burying Ground, which is an old cemetery. If you don't know, I'm a bit of a taffophile, which means I like cemeteries. Um, I specifically like these old kind of historical ones with the standing up headstones, because those are cool and interesting. And I'm not into like your typical like forest lawn. All the cemeteries are just like horizontal in the ground and look the same. And I, I don't like that. But anyway, I like these kinds of cemeteries. So we vibed in there for a little while. So we then moved on down the Freedom Trail and stopped off at the King's Chapel uh, Cemetery, aka another old cemetery for me to vibe in. Um, so we walked around there for a bit. There was also like this weird old like well thing that was like gated off that you could like hear every so often the metro going through down below. So it was kind of creepy and nightmare fuel. But anyway, we went through there and then continued on down the Freedom Trail to see some more cool old buildings. We then stopped off at Fanua Marketplace, once again, don't know if I'm saying that right, but my dad got some clam chowder there and it was good. So after that little lunch break, we continued on the Freedom Trail, saw some more old cool stuff, including, you guessed it, another old cemetery, uh, this time Cops Hill Burying Ground, which was uh, my personal favorite of the old cemeteries. So we visited, it was on this nice little hill, you get a nice view, it wasn't as like crowded and touristy as the other ones, so you know, I were old and had died in that time, I would have wanted to be buried there. Um, it's very random, it has no real um, application to any of this, but anyway, that was the vibe I got and I liked it. So. I then went to the Isabella Stewart Garner Museum with my mom, which is an art museum in Boston. It's probably most notable for the fact that it had the biggest ever art heist in like the early 90s or late 80s. Um, the case was never actually solved, so the art's still missing, um, but there's actually a pretty good documentary on Netflix about it called This is a Robbery. But besides the whole heist business, it's also just a really cool art museum. There's this lovely courtyard in the middle that's really cool to look at. And of course, there's plenty of great art throughout the museum. Uh, it was a little hard to see some of the art sometimes because the lighting was pretty dim in order to preserve the art, which I totally understand. But it was hard to see some of the art, which was sad. But that, it is what it is, you know? Um, so after that, I went to the gift shop, and uh, I love an art museum gift shop, so of course, I spent much time there and bought many things. Time for my Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum haul, because I can't go to an art museum and not buy something. <laughs> actually, I actually wanted to buy a lot, a lot more things, but I, I restricted myself. 
like a grown up. So let's let's look at what I got. Okay. So um, I got this print. Um, it's of the Violet Note from James McNeil Whistler. Ta-da! Looks lovely, amazing, wow, perfect, beautiful. Um, yeah, figured. I always like a good print. It's kind of my general go-to when I go to art museums. So I got this one because I think it's vibe. I think it'll look good in my apartment back home. I mean, any of them would, but this one especially. Um, and then, what else did I get? Dude, I don't even know if I'm looking at the camera. Great. Okay. Um, I got this little pan, pan feet of Medusa. Um, she was a mosaic in the courtyard of the museum. Um, you know, you know me. I don't know if you know this, but uh, I really like pathology. So I got this little pin for my jean jacket. Um, because not that I need more pins, but I really like them. So I got another one. Um, and then last thing I got for these little candles. Little candles that look like flower succulent things. Um, I got this for my roommate, Ashley. Um, cause I don't know. I thought she might like them. Hopefully. I think they're cute. Um, so yeah, that's my, uh, art museum haul. Ah, let's go. Okay, bye. For dinner that night, we got some vegan Thai food because my aunt is vegan. Uh, the food was really, really good, but the service did take a while, which was sad, but I guess it balances out with the quality of the food. Day three, uh, my dad accompanied my mom and aunts to go on the Freedom Trail while I went off to meet up with my friend Stephanie, who's studying at Northeastern in Boston. So we stopped off for some caffeine at Blue Bottle, and then we met up with my brother, Sean, to get to some lunch at Cafe Landwehr. Once again, really great food, and once again, not so great service. So I guess once again, it balances out, but still kind of sad, but we had a good time. <laughs> We then headed over to Berkeley slash Boston Conservatory for Sean's graduation since he was graduating from Boston Conservatory. I was kind of hyped at seeing the building because I had just seen Coda like a month ago and um, if you didn't know, Coda won the Oscar this year and I recommend you check it out if you haven't seen it. But anyway, we waited in line for a bit where I saw these finestras because I guess finestras are everywhere and you can't escape them even when you graduate Chapman. So finally we made our way inside uh, where my brother is graduating from Boston Conservatory for majoring in horn performance because he plays the French horn. So we, uh, you know, attended his graduation. My mom was really on top of it about taking pictures and videos and he graduated, yay! With a major in horn performance, Sean E. McClendon. For dinner, we went to Sanzi, which along with good food, also had good service for the first time. Amazing. Day four, we headed up to Newport, Rhode Island, but before we did that, we stopped at Starbucks because there was one really close to us and a girl needs her caffeine. So uh, if you didn't know, Newport, Rhode Island was a place where uh, back in the day during like the Gilded Age, a lot of those families would have their summer houses. So we went over to Breakers, which was the Vanderbilt's summer place and toured around. And it was very fancy and rich looking. And I was very conflicted because I was like, all this money could have gone to like, you know, curing like diseases or solving homelessness or feeding the hungry, but also at the same time, it was really pretty to look at. So, you know, the whole conflict about money and wealth and anyway, here's some cool stuff. Uh, also, while I was there, I saw some things that looked a little bit ghostly. It was just the wind because it was a windy day, but I thought it was cool. So here's that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, after the little tour through the house, dropped us off in the gift shop. And, of course, I could not leave without buying something, so I bought this book. After the gift shop, I walked around the kind of back outside of the breaker's place uh, a bit. It was very, very windy, so I was struggling a lot, but uh, there were some cool sights, and uh, I tried to talk to the camera at this point, 
but it was a struggle because it was so windy, so here's me attempting to subtitle myself. I'm sorry. We then drove back into town in order to get some lunch. It was a little bit of a struggle at first to find parking because it was Mother's Day that we were there, but finally we found this lovely noodle place and we had some great ramen and I was very happy, although I did want a Thai tea but they had run out. I feel like that was a common occurrence throughout this trip and it was once again sad, but the noodles were so good that it made up for it. After we got some lunch, we stopped off at a gift shop and I kind of just vibed around to the music and stuff. And then after the gift shop, we went to um, kind of like the little coastline where you could kind of like walk along. We went down these stairs to get closer to the ocean and uh, while we were there, my dad got splashed. And it was very funny and I was very happy it was not me. <laughs> Day five, my mom went over to Sean's to help him pack, and while she did that, me, my dad, and my aunt went over to the Bay Area to walk around and see some more sights. So that was a nice, fun, windy time still. Yeah. I would, once you helped me out, then I would push you in, and that's just how it goes. We stopped off at Fennel Marketplace again, where I got some chowder myself, and then we went over to this cannoli place where my dad got a nice pistachio cannoli. We then went over to uh, Berkeley's little gift shop, because I'm a Berkeley dead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, after that, we went over to a nearby park, just to, like sit, recline, soak in some rare sun. It was very nice, uh, although the view itself was a little uh, lackluster. The sun was appreciated, and I managed to get myself slightly sunburned. Uh, while my dad and aunt went off to TJ Maxx to look for some luggage tags, I went off to get some boba because I am that person. So the closest place was a Kung Fu tea and the boba was okay. After that, we all met up again with my mom and brother uh, near him to get some Italian food and the food was very good and very much appreciated. Day 6 was our final day and another travel day. We had our flight at like 5 a.m. So we had to get up at like 2.30 a.m. AKA basically didn't sleep. So we headed off to the airport where I got some more Starbucks because why not? Uh, and then we had a brief layover in Chicago where I wanted to get some lunch food because I had breakfast already, but it was only 9 a.m. So all the places were only serving breakfast food and it was sad. Anyway, we finally arrived back home in California, right back into Long Beach Airport. And I was very happy because it wasn't windy there and there was sun and it was delightful to be back home. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of uh, our little Boston trip. I hope you uh, enjoyed living vicariously through my janky little vlog, and I will see you next time. Bye!